happened? Hi. Hi. You all right? Yeah. Oh. Oh, they're beautiful. Oh, that's a dozen roses. Oh, so expensive. Come on. I'm trying to say thank you for sticking by me. I didn't know what else to do. Well, uh, I must sell my son his birthday. Or? I made a decision. One I won't go back on. To quit. For good? Oh, honey, for real. I hate the person I've become. Oh, baby. your new life and your new house. To hell with bad times. What's your language? Did I tell you how proud I am of you? <laughs> Everything's all right now. for the safety of their daughter, who disappeared a week ago. She was last seen leaving their home after Sunday dinner, wearing brown slacks, a beige blouse, and a tan corduroy jacket. Her father, John Benedict, has asked that if anyone has any information regarding her whereabouts, to please contact the Methuen police. Hey, Beryl? Yeah, we can hear you. Did you see that piece about the missing girl on TV last night? No, I was bowling. She was beautiful, but uh, they said she was wearing a tan jacket. Wasn't that a tan jacket you picked up from those kids? <gasps> Is this your daughter's jacket, Mr. Benedict? Professor Douglas? Yes. Detective Merrill, Boston City Police. We have a warrant to search these premises for evidence surrounding disappearance of Robin Benedict. Assistant District Attorney Grant. Could you step in here with me, Professor, please? You seen this before? No, no, I never saw it before. What about this shirt? did have a shirt, something like that. Take a good look. It's hard to tell.
Better get a picture of that. You don't know our credit cards, phone book, and the cosmetics got into your closet. Oh, well, those are Robin's things, but I don't know how they got in my closet. That's the truth. Somebody must have planted them there to try to get me into trouble. Uh, Joe, can I see you a minute? Positive reaction to blood in the right-hand pocket. I found what looks like a piece of brain or skull tissue. I'll know for sure when we get it back to the lab. Is this your jacket, Professor Douglas? I don't know. It looks like my jacket. But I'm not going to say it is. I can't really say whether it's mine or not. Would you put it on, please? Hmm. Professor Douglas, I suggest you get a lawyer. We can decide to prosecute this case to the fullest on first-degree murder, but without your daughter's body, I'm not sure we can get a conviction. Does he know where she is? He says so, but it's a sure thing his lawyer will never let him testify at a trial. They want to cut a deal. Guilty on a manslaughter charge for a full confession. Then he'll tell us where she is? But he murdered her. We know that. I want a decent burial for her. How long? What? How long they put the bachelor away for? It could be 20 years. Yeah, and how many of those 20 Jack, years are you going to serve? I want her home with us. She has to rest in peace. All right. Cut a deal. I wish to advise the court that my client, Professor William Douglas, wishes to enter a plea of guilty to the manslaughter indictment. That he did assault, beat, and kill Robin Benedict. At the conclusion of the plea this morning, Your Honor, Dr. Douglas has agreed to give the specific details of the manner of the killing and the location of the body. Is that your intent at this time? Professor. Yes, sir. You understand that my function at this point in the case is to determine if you are making a voluntary and intelligent plea of guilty. Yes, sir, I understand. Uh, professor. Oh, there he is. Was it a crime of passion, Professor? If you love her. Professor, please. I think it'd be best if you started at the beginning. Well, I may have to um, refer to my notes from time to time. That'd be all right. It's all right. As long as you tell the truth. Well, it, um, it started the night of the awards dinner. I uh, remember because that was a very special night for me. See, I'd just gotten a $200,000 federal grant for the university, and they were honoring me. Me, my research, was responsible for all that money coming to Tufts. And they wanted me to know how grateful they were. <laughs> how much they, how much they valued me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.
please. Please, thank you. Thank you. Please. Thank you. We're trying in the only way we have, Bill, to congratulate you for bringing in one hell of a lot of money. You embarrass me. That's too damn bad. Just down the street from the university was the combat zone. professor of cell biology does study cells I think you're teasing me
seen her before? Uh-huh. She looks like my brother's oldest, Jennifer. I'm gonna get married last month. She's trying to make her college tuition. Maybe. She needs a little advice and a safer method. <laughs> Wait, I get it, I get it, I get it. Look. Excuse me, young lady. Hello, boy. I'll be double and a half with the two of you. You really are new around here. My father always told me I had a big mouth. You really think this is something you want to do with your life? Why did you have to call my parents? It's none of their business. Well, sweetheart, you look so pure and innocent. We thought you were underage. I'm 21. See? I'm 21. You could have looked. Put that stuff away now. How long have you been working? Not long. How long? Three months. How come we ain't seen you around before? Working at a club. Massages? Who are you working for? I'm not working for anybody. Every girl on the street works for somebody, sweetheart. Now, who are you working for? I already told you nobody. You stay out on the streets, you're gonna end up like this. We found one of the girls last week. Her head had been shot off. I'm just trying to scare me. You take my advice, young lady. Get off the streets while you can. She lives with you, we don't book her. Is she okay? Yeah, she's fine. We only picked her up for questioning. But this is a warning for her and for you. She needs some sense knocked into her. Quick. Robin? to meet her there. I didn't know what kind of a place it was. I was just going in and these two cops stopped me. For no reason. But you're all right. No. Well, what were you doing to make them stop you? John, it was a mistake. Let's go. I'm going to drive you to your car. Sweetheart, yeah. Come here, baby. Hi, Madame. Listen, can we get something going? How much? I wasn't doing anything, Daddy. I want you to come home with us. I have my own apartment now. That's my home. I can't let you off in a place like this. The car is right behind there. I'm just going to get in it and drive You home will spend the night with us. I will not. Come on, let her go. I want to talk to you about this. There's nothing to talk about. Well, what are you doing in a place like this? You already told me. And I don't believe you. So why the hell, Susan? When have you ever believed me? How often do you come to a place? Sir? Tell Mom I'll call her in the morning. Why? Leave me alone. Then tell me why. Tell me why you're selling yourself! A grand night. I make a thousand dollars, Daddy. So, you were attracted to her. Yeah, well, what's wrong with that? She liked me. She was nice to me. She made you feel good. You see, I was working very hard at the time. Every night, sometimes till two or three in the morning. University demand those kind of hours? Oh, I had to. I had work to do. I was responsible for over $1.6 million in research grants. My research alone. Now, here we have a photograph of the cells which line the alveoli. Now, these cells produce a phospholipid. PHOS, PHO lipid which lowers the surface tension of the lining fluid of the lungs. And that substance is? Surfactant. I've read everything you've written. Thank you. Shall I bring you some coffee before I leave? Hmm? 
Yeah. What time is it? It's after 11. Hmm? What are you doing still here? I'm your secretary. You spend far too many late nights here alone. Ruth, you know, I get paid a great deal of money for my time. If you wait a minute, I'll walk you out. Well, it looks like we missed the rain anyway. Nadine, your real name? Nope. Would you tell me what it is? <laughs> I'm not supposed to. I'll pay you five dollars extra if you tell me. <laughs> you don't have to. It's Robin. Like the bird? Uh-huh. Yeah, pretty corny. I was born in April. Springtime. It's kind of a dumb name. Kids used to tease me about it. Beautiful. It's beautiful. Just like you. You better get ready. Do you live here? No. I have my own apartment. Professor in cell biology, can you believe it? 
I would draw pictures of cells and viruses and things like that to go with his papers. What do you know about cells and viruses? I'm learning. You know, I thought about throwing you out. About telling you you weren't wanted here anymore. But I can't. I'm your mother. And I just can't do it. Exactly, sweet at the Ritz, but it'll do. I got your note on that new grad student, Robin Benedict. Where do you want her check sent? Well, they haven't sent here. Well, she, you don't have an address? Oh, no, not yet, but I'll see if she gets it. Okay. Yo, hey, before you go, uh, would you, uh, would you take this voucher in for payment for me? Sure. I bought some lab supplies for $61. Okay, Dr. Douglas, I'll put it right through. <sighs> See the checks from Tufts will give you documentable income. You'll be on record as having been employed by the medical school. And then when you retire from business, uh, your resume won't have a gap. I don't, I don't know what to say. Or you could go to college. I could help you with your scholarship applications, your student loans. I'd be glad to. Yeah, I went to college once. Oh, did you? The Rhode Island School of Design? Oh, yeah. That's a very well thought of school. Well, actually, it was only for one summer. But they liked my work. Really, they did. I'm sure you were very good. <laughs> I can tell you're talented. Well, how can you tell? The way you see things. Unique what you notice. <laughs> Would you show me your drawing sometime? Sure. Yeah, it's time for me to go now. Um, lunch took an hour and ten minutes. Why don't we just make it an hour? You can pay me tonight. Sure. Well, uh, before you go, I. Uh, I have something for you. Me? Yeah. I hope you like it. see him sometime after work. So how's Joyce? Um, gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Willie, the way you go through Willie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's just a mocking time till you come back. It's better this way. Isn't it? It's better to be friends. Yes, yeah, says who? Willie, I'm seeing this guy. 
story. So weird. He's nothing like I'm used to. He's old. Well, older. A professor. <laughs> the dunce is seeing a professor. <laughs> Don't say that. Well, I can't figure it out. Is he good to you? Yeah. <laughs> you can't do it! Come on! One more lap! Just one more! One! Oh, <laughs> for a reimbursement of lab supplies. You seem so anxious about it that I brought it right up as soon as the mail oh, came. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Oh, I, th I thought that maybe, maybe you'd like to see them. That's why I brought them. Otherwise, they're just... Oh, they're wonderful. But... <laughs> they're really great. And you know about art, don't you? I could just tell you what. <laughs> yes, I do. Well, but so many people are better than me. I think you're the best. <laughs> wow. <laughs> person and deserve only the very best in life. <laughs> I wanted to ask you to go with me, normal rates of course, but I didn't want to ask you at the last minute. Saskatoon is very nice, but I miss you very much. <laughs> what mistake did I make? Loving someone isn't a mistake. Why is our daughter selling herself in the streets? I don't know. You started embezzling to pay for the time. See, some days we'd spend 10 hours together just, just doing things. We call those our grand days. Because I'd I'd pay her a thousand dollars for the time. What sort of things? Oh, sometimes we'd go to the movies. Once we went canoeing. It's very romantic. All for a thousand a day. Have you ever had someone in your life? Have you ever had someone who made every minute so vivid, so bright that you weren't sure it was even real? Are you asking me? I was happy. I don't think I'd ever been happy before. I know I never felt the way I felt with Robin. It was like a drug, that feeling. I wanted more, more. How can you afford me, Bill? I grant money. I can spend it any way I want. I bring in thousands and thousands of dollars. You won't get into trouble? You worrying about me? No. That's against the rules. <laughs> well, here's something to prove to Rob. Huh? Take it. Oh, come on. Come on, take it. Take it, Bill. Silly.
five o'clock. I need my mail. Oh. I can pick it up for you first thing in the morning. Bring it to lunch. Would you? Yeah, no trouble. Oh, thank you. Because uh, when we're apart, I like to think of where you might be. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. <laughs> I'll see you at 2.30. Okay. for Miss Benedict? Uh, yes. Uh, Dr. Douglas, I have to... Uh, we'll get to it in the morning, Hale. We'll talk. I know I've been busy, but I've got to go. Oh, but your postdoctoral committee's at three. Uh, I'll be late. Uh, tell him I'll make it, but I'll be late. There's more to life than stuffy faculty meetings. He acts like a man who's having an affair. Never seen him light up for anything but a cell biopsy. Well, I guess there's hope for all of us. romantic kind of things. Oh, sure you are. Well, uh, I never know what to say to women. They laugh. I don't know how to manage it. You, uh, you have a boyfriend? Um, you can ask those kinds of questions, Bill. They're part of my personal life. I've already told you everything about my life. I know, but uh, with me it has to be different. But friends are supposed to tell each other things. I know, but we're special friends. <gasps> That's what I mean. You just can't know about my private life. I don't think that's fair. Well, that's the way it works.
back and I need one of those golden oldies. Put on some of that old music for me. Take care of you. As if I was like that. I know I lost my keys in that van because when we got to the police station, they were gone. One of those girls took them. Uh -huh. I'd like one of those keys. Wait a minute. Well, that way I can wait for you here. Inside? No. This is where I work. Here. There you are, miss. Use it after 2.30. No. Oh, come on. Oh, let me have one. Come on. Come on. Oh, it's for a special time. No, it isn't. I need one. You do not. Let go of me. Bill. Bill. Who me? Why are you acting like this? Give it to me. Stop it. Why are you acting like this? At some point, Tufts would find out about the money. I couldn't think about that. You mean you did have some kind of plan? Plan? Of course I had a plan. I was sure that if Robin and I spent enough time together, if I gave her enough things to express what was in my heart, if I kept at it, if I worked hard enough, she'd understand. Understand what? That we had to be together. She wouldn't have to see anyone else, nobody but me. So many vouchers, I couldn't help but become suspicious. I decided I had to do something, so 
I started to make calls to check the ones I could, like the hotel in Chicago, where Dr. Douglas and Miss Benedict were supposed to have stayed during the conference. There was no record of either of them. And the room rates were half those submitted by Dr. Douglas for reimbursement. Are you certain about that? And then this crossed my desk. Y you see how the 127 has been changed to 527? Not a very good job of forgery, is it? I'd better see all of Dr. Douglas's vouchers. I uh, brought them with me. I hope you understand why I came to you. I was concerned about my job. Do you think you could do that? Hey, wait, wait. Did I hear myself say that I was going to help you here? Uh, oh, Willie, you know you will. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, and I want to change the wallpaper in this hallway here. That wouldn't be too hard to put up, would it? No. How can you afford this? Well, I've saved some money. You saved enough from your graphics work for a down payment? Yeah. It's my money. And I want this house. A lot? A whole lot. We're in the middle of an audit of Dr. Douglas's expenditures. It's been requested that his tenure nomination be tabled at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid I concur. I deserve it. Deserve it. I work for it. Who works as hard as I do? Who works as hard as I do? You tell me one person. I earned it. I earned it. I earned it, and they owe it to me. No way you keep dismissing my suggestion without even considering it. It just doesn't work that way, Bill. That's why. Yeah, we spent so much time with one another. It just makes sense that we live together. You're gonna pay me for twenty-four hours a day. You can't, what are you saying? Is that a joke? Is that in the discussion? I better get dressed. I think we should take a little break. Hey, what, do you, what do you mean? What do you mean? Just, just for a little while. Things have gotten out of hand, Bill. I understand what you're saying, Ron. I understand. We have a special relationship, but it's just business. I understand that. Huh? I'm sorry for the way I acted. I promise I'll make it up to you. I promise. Huh? I promise. Okay? I promise. I promise. Please? Another 4500 for computer work on a different project. They go on and on. Here's an expense of $112 for an answering machine. Bill, is there some way you can substantiate these? Well, I'll need some time to go through my records, but uh, I'm sure these expenses can be verified. As a matter of fact, I can do some of them immediately. Bill, I would surely appreciate that.
Someone's broken into my house. Right there. I'll be right there. No, no, don't. I'm all right. I just... I, I didn't know who else to call. Robin? has a remote feature. You can use this beeper to check your calls on any phone. You just call your own number, press this button, and the machine will replay your messages. Oh. Good, I'll take it. Okay. And I'll, uh, I'd like uh, two beepers. And this one, this one even has a, has a beeper, see? So you can get messages, even when you're not at home. Nice Why am I getting letters from the university about the money they pay me? Oh, there's nothing to worry about. I don't want any trouble. No, it's just a computer mix-up. There's no trouble. Things are different now. No, they're not. Listen, you pay me for my time and we have sex. No, it's more than that. The it's other things just we shared were a mistake. That's not true. And I never repeat a mistake. Sir. 
the nastiest thing. First, he didn't say anything. Then he started to uh, say things like, um, do you know your daughter's a prostitute? Sometimes he's a lot rougher, describing things she'd do. Have you called the phone company? They tried to help, but the calls only last a few seconds. I'm afraid for Robin. Does she know about them? Well, we haven't told her. Isn't there something you can do to get her to stop, to get her off the streets? Can you do anything to help? Well, we've talked to her and we've arrested her again. She never told us. No, the charges were dismissed for lack of evidence. Happens all the time. Now, the best we can do is to keep arresting her when we can. Like we do with all the girls. I wish I could pick her up and drag her home. I'm losing her. And I don't know what to do. It's all very well for you to bring in the answering machine and receipts for, what, $980. But, Dr. Douglas, I have to inform you that we've concluded our audit and find $67,000 that is unaccounted for. Can you possibly verify that amount of money? Messages on your machine all day. I'm gonna talk to you. I'm working. It's important. Look, I'll just be a minute. Can you wait? Sure. second floor. There's a prostitute named Robin Benedict who rents an apartment around in back. She keeps bringing men in there. Something's got to be done. So she left you? She was emotional. She didn't mean it. But you had arrested. I couldn't have her. Nobody could. You were angry with her? No. No, I wasn't. After all that money you gave her, $67,000 of the university's money? Weren't you afraid of losing your job? My lawyer told me it could all be worked out. Do you mean to tell me I that Douglas was under a lot of pressure at work without any time off for vacations? My appointment book was filled with commitments. Uh, I barely had time for myself. He was eating all the wrong kinds of foods, junk food. He wasn't getting any exercise. So what? Uh, so in the professional opinion of a psychologist who examined Dr. Douglas, his predicament at Tufts could easily be explained as a direct result of job-induced stress. I was a valuable asset. I was sure everything could be worked out. Mr. Donaldson. Yes, sir. Robin! What are you doing here? Well, Detective Sheehan called. He told us to come down here. I don't know who that is. This means you've been arrested again. The police know I'm 21. That they have no right to involve the point. you. Listen, the charges are going to be dismissed. Robin, we've been getting phone calls for weeks now. What kind of calls? Dirty calls. About you, what you're doing. What, what does the voice sound like? It's a man's voice. It's awful. 
Sometimes Rhonda gets them. Rhonda. Robin. Why are you here? Oh, someone from the police department called, told me to come down. Was it uh, uh, Detective Sheehan? Oh, yes, I believe that was the name, yeah. There's no Detective Sheehan on this case. Yeah, well, maybe it was somebody else. I or didn't maybe the... there was no call. Your case is up. I want you to leave. Mom, Daddy, go home. Right? great deal of strain. It's a terrible mistake, all of this. Uh, uh, Professor Bill Douglas. She's been doing some wonderful work for me. First rate work. I'm sure it's a case of mistaken identity. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. Why was I removed from my committees? The school felt it was best until we straightened out all these financial matters. I spoke to a lawyer. I spoke to a lawyer. He said it's all a matter of negotiation. Don't you see, I have my camper. I have my property in Narragansett. I can sell it. I have been cooperating with this university. I tell you, it can all be worked out. Bill, there is no record of Robin Benedict ever having attended MIT. Yet you gave her credit for expert assistance on a published research paper. You've even had the temerity to go on submitting vouchers while this audit's been in progress. You are either one of the world's most foolhardy embezzlers, or you have monumental contempt for this university. I don't know what you've done with the money, but damn it, we are going to get it back. Hi. Can I answer that? Nadine, leave a message. I know who it is. Robin, why won't you talk to me? Why won't you let me apologize? I, I made a list of things I promised not to do anymore. Like not bothering you. Blue zone. Like not arguing over money. Like not, not calling you too much. Robin, I can change. I will change. I, can I see you one more time? Please call. He keeps calling. You gotta get rid of this guy. Can you call my parents? I know it was him and my John. My regulars. So of course, they've all disappeared. This guy is too weird. Why don't you just call the cops? Sure. Put myself permanently out of business? That's good. Hi. See him again. Leave the message when you hear the beep. Robin, I'm so ashamed of the things I said. Please, let me show you how sorry I am. Robin, I have to see you tonight. I should be, baby. Mother's worried sick about you. And so am I. Angel, I'm afraid for you. No, I can take care of myself. No, you can't. Watch me. I'm 
figure it out, and then I finally realized it was the professor who was making all those calls to my parents. This is the same guy you were dating who was so nice to you? Well, it used to be, and then he got possessive. Rubber, Robin broke another heart. It's not funny. Well, I'm the original member of the Robin Band who broke my heart. Well, some bacon? Really, Willie. I'm scared. I dedicated all of my time to the projects assigned to me, forfeiting vacation time to the detriment of my health. My problem has been caused in part by my dedication to the very university that is now prosecuting me. Who else? on staff, was involved in nine committees, in addition to a full teaching load, in addition to obtaining grants and continuing research. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been as dedicated and committed to this school as any man could be. A very good school. Was interested in having me uh, do research and teach. So I thought I'd be working again. What were you doing for money in the meantime? I refinanced my house. I needed $2,000 to pay off my bank card, and I needed some money to pay the attorney that represented me at Tufts. Were you seeing Robin during this time? No, I, I tried to get in touch with her. I called her, sent her letters, but uh, she wouldn't talk to me. Can you blame her? What? Can you blame her for not seeing you? The phone calls you were making to the Benedicts, the police, the men in her trick book. You were terrorizing her. You don't understand, do you? I wanted to be the only one she could see.
behind. Willie's almost finished with the one in here. I haven't made up my mind about the wallpaper yet. Oh, and downstairs, they have this wonderful spot for my drawing table. Wow, well, I can't believe you actually own this house. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> it's lovely. Well, come on downstairs. I got luck around. Great, great. Daddy, Daddy, come through here. Come on. Oh, don't touch the wall. It's wet. Watch this stuff on the floor. Oh, this is my favorite room. Look, I put my drawing table right here, and the light coming through the window is just perfect. Mm-hmm. Don't you like it, Daddy? Don't you like my house? Oh, yeah. I, I like the house. You're so quiet. Well, I don't like uh, how you got the money for the house. All right. Now you, you got the house. It was so important. It was what you always wanted. Well, what I want to hear is that, uh, is that you're ready to quit that life. Robin? I'm waiting. for the living room, but it hasn't come yet. And wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, this pinky beige shade, what do you see? It, it sounds like you spent a million. That cost more than I thought. Uh-huh. Are you working? I kind of promised my folks I'd quit when I got the house. I need to furnish it, don't I? Unless you want to sleep on the floor. I slept in worse places. <laughs> Spa. It's off the turnpike.
see her again. We started talking on the telephone. It wasn't a very happy time for her. She was like a person on a roller coaster. Oh, it was very nice. I tried to see her, but she wouldn't see me. Then Dr. Eckworth called. He's the department chairman at Plattsburgh. Wanted me to come up to lecture so they could make a final decision about hiring me. Did Robin go with you? Yeah, yes. Yes, she did. I promised her a thousand dollars. I knew she needed the money. I introduced her as a grad student. We got along fine at the beginning. It was just like it used to be. Were all these people college students? Yeah, most of them are students, yeah. You know, this could be the break we both need. You could go to school here. behavior of the lungs is disturbed by any number of diseases. Diffuse pulmonary fibrosis, pleural thickening, tuberculosis healing with scarring, and in my opinion, the worst culprit of all is the air in Los Angeles in August and September. <laughs> now, in considering the newborn, an absence of surfactant is thought to be responsible for the alveolar collapse. The stiff bonds we see in highland membrane disease. Great to have you back. It's nice to be here. <laughs> Take care of you, Robin. You're a valuable human being, but you need direction. And you'll never find anyone that cares about you as much as I do. You know, for a while there, I was, uh, I was worried about your future. But now I can see that it'll all work out. We'll move. Yeah. We'll move here to Plattsburgh. And, uh, you won't have to work anymore. You can go to school full time. I'll see to that. I'll see that you get a scholarship. <sighs> Don't worry. I can arrange it. <sighs> and then we'll live together. <laughs> and don't worry about my um, home situation. My wife and I, <laughs> well, we haven't slept together in years. It'll be better this way. You have a wife? <laughs> she doesn't care what I do, though. It's, uh, it's not a real marriage. You know? So she lives with you? Uh, and kids? Oh, uh, teenagers now. Soon they'll be out on their own. You're pathetic. Don't say that. You are. You're pathetic. It's horrible. Don't say that. So am I. I need you, Robin. But you wouldn't talk to me. I wasn't sure I could continue. You know what I mean? together again. I'm a new person. We looked at houses the next day. It's our third day together. I was up to three grand. I 
she was uh, very quiet. I could tell her heart wasn't in it. It wasn't the kind of trip I wanted at all. She was too uh, intense. And then when we got back to Boston, <laughs> it got awful. I don't know why. Robin, are you sure I can't take you home? I mean, it's no problem. I said I'll take a cab. I'd like the 3,000s now. Three days, you owe me three thousand dollars. You know you want it. Sir. No, I want my money. It's not like that between us anymore. You know that. But what are you doing? Robin, my briefcase. My slides are in there. My my papers. Very important. You'll get it back when I get my money. No. We made a deal. say thank you for sticking by me. I didn't know what else to do. Well, uh, my son was somebody's birthday or? I made a decision. One I won't go back on. To quit. For good? Oh, honey, for real. I hate the person I've become. Oh, baby. your new life and your new house. To hell with bad times. What's your language? Did I tell you how proud I am of you? <laughs> <laughs> Everything's all right now. <laughs> oh. I love you, Angel.
Come in. take anything. I've only got two thousand dollars, but I can get Look, another. I just came by to give you your briefcase. You don't owe me anything and we'll call it even, okay? I gotta pay you. I'm not going to see you anymore. Please, not now. I want you to leave me and my family alone. Look. I've got the money, see? Oh, Bill, don't. Come on, you take it. It's yours. It's yours. We have an arrangement. Not anymore, we don't. It's yours. Take it. Bobby, take it. We have an arrangement. Take I it. I don't want it! shopping center in Providence. something more. 